Let us pray. Almighty God, look down upon this thy house and we thy humble servants. Grant us the spirit of thy grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Who has done this? Answer me. Who has done this? An edict, squire, from the archbishop himself and by order of the king. By order of the king? Is the Church of England not a Protestant church? Would the king turn the house of God into a Roman temple? Mr. Cromwell, I beseech you. Does the king think that God can be bought with gold, trinkets, and gilded rubbish? I know only that I have been instructed. Has this king forgotten the Reformation? Mr. Cromwell, I'm away with it. Popish idolatry! Say unto Moses, Thou shalt not make unto thyself any graven image. Now bow down to them. Has this king forgotten the Spanish Inquisition? Is the Roman Catholic Church to have a seat in Westminster? Hello, welcome. Hello, adoring fans. <sighs> On your book journeys. On your book journeys. Welcome to the the celestial city of the Spinecrackers podcast. Yes. Uh, the ascended Eloy elect are here to <laughs> tell you uh, yet another thing we either will uh, say is saved or not. Yeah. And I, I, I just got to say, this is, and this is just uh, uh, orthodox Calvinist doctrine. If you are subscribed to our Patreon, that is a very strong sign that you are among the elect and you are saved. That's right. That's so, right. <laughs> I don't know. It's just true. That's it. it you is. will. You are. <laughs> yeah. It's not a guarantee, but it's a pretty powerful sign that you might be going to hell if you don't. <laughs> true. If you hey, don't. Alms? If you don't go. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh God. We're already. We're already. This is already blasphemous. Well, yeah, that's we're another canceled. thing. I feel like. Patreon.com slash Minecrackers, by the way, if you want that. Right, if you'd like for your soul to be residing in the Celestial City for all eternity. <laughs> the Celestial City is just our Discord. Oh, God, it's like Discord <laughs> is hell every time. <laughs> no, Discord is the Slav Despond. <laughs> the Slav Despond, dude. Yeah. Um, I Yeah, I think we are... Okay, so first of all, right, my name's Matt. My name is Gabe. My name is Paul. We all have very uh, holy names, very biblical names. Yeah, actually, I mean, all literally. three of my names are saints. My last name as well. I'm well, not all, saying that. You're, but, you, but your first name is also... St. Paul. One of the Gospels, right? Yeah. Yeah, and yours too, Matt. That's right, yeah. And I, I mean, I don't know. You guys are pretty cool, but I'm literally <laughs> the angel Gabriel. That is true. Yeah, you are. So. <laughs> God damn it. Cucked again. <laughs> Cucked? <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> I don't know if that applies there. It just—I feel like they just generally means owned at this point in in the, the lexicon. It's evolving. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Anyway, like so, literally. Yeah. So, uh, can, if you can guess what book we're talking about, then you've already read it. We drop quite a few hints. Yeah, it's not the Bible hint, but it is. Kind of close. Fucking it's got to. It has to be one of the like the second most read Christian text behind the Bible, or one of them, right? It is, yeah. From yeah. what I understand, it's it is an like absolute the number two. banger. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think that's that's quite literally true, right? Like, uh, I, I, I think so. It might have been dethroned at this point by by something, but I think by it like was the fucking left Twilight. left behind series or some shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Divergent. Yeah, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, I, I think the 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 uh, the like uh, descriptors are like English language, like religious texts or something. It was like number two, yeah. second only to the Bible, and it is of course Christian banger. Paul Bunyan's Pilgrim's Paul Progress. Bu Did you say Paul Bunyan? <laughs> yeah. Paul Bunyan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Yeah. J.K. Uh, it's John Bunyan. But John Bunyan. 
Yeah, that's what we're, that's what we read and are discussing. Is this the oldest book we've read for the podcast? 1678. It's got to uh, be, right? Yes. I think yeah. so. Yeah. We, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure by a lot actually. <laughs> yeah, probably by a, 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 like a couple hundred years. Yeah, I think we went far as far back as the like mid 1800s maybe. For what? Confidence, uh, man? confidence man? With confidence man? Confidence man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what yeah. about uh this beats that what about the Christmas stories? Oh, Dickens. Oh, late, yeah. That's like 80 80s. I think that's later. 80s. Yeah, that's still yeah. Ra- so. Anyway, around the same time. So yeah, this is this this has got to be by like 200 years. Yeah. So uh I mean, I think I, I was going to introduce this as as I was I was curious about how you 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 conveniently skipped over the issue, Matt, because I was going to say, you know, introduce it potentially as John Bunyan's novel, but it might not be a novel because it's sort of a progenitor of of the novel potentially. It's an allegory, which might be a different cate- categorically a different sort of thing. We'll, we'll talk about it, right? Which you know, allegory as a mode of storytelling is biblical, right? You know, this is all obviously. This well, that was book, sort of I don't know, that was sort of controversial in Bunyan's time, of course, because there were all these. That I mean, you know, Bunyan being a. Sorry, I'm already getting into the weeds. You're bursting with factoids. Yeah, I literally you, I did I, a I, lot of research. <laughs> I, I read. I'm not. I, I'm not. It's not a flex, but I, I read the entire Cambridge Companion to Bunyan for this. So that's fine. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> He's the angel. Wait, what does that mean exactly? Is that like, is like a whole separate book to it? Yeah. Or well, what? it's a yeah. It's a collection of of essays from like Bunyan scholars and experts about this. About they weren't all about this book, but about Bunyan and a lot. Most of them were about this book in some way. Wow. Yes, I'm aware that there were. Uh, some questions about you know the one true text being introduced as doubt through what like things like the Quran being available around this time or people being made aware of like other all encompassing religions and cosmologies. Well, and like, yeah, oh, shit. What? Yeah, there were sort of baby, you know, the beginnings of of like true the era of, of empire and mm-hmm. got you know sort of globalization, which is a whole other topic we'll probably talk about in the Patreon, and I want to talk about. Bunyan in global context because I read a really good essay about that. But anyway, the, I, the, 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 what I was referring to was the controversy in in just even within uh, Christianity about the right way to read the Bible because there were people who True. read it, read all the stories allegorically, but that was sort of controversial amongst people of Bunyan's uh, faith, which is you know like a Puritan, pur- pur- puritanical Calvinism basically. Um, and, you know, Bunyan's whole thing was sort of there's almost a performative contradiction in this book, which is just a, a straight up allegory. And then his professed uh, preferred mode of reading the Bible, which was like it's all there in plain language for anyone to read, like no metaphors, no allegories necessary, essentially, which is completely different than what he's doing in this in this text. So that's kind of interesting off the bat. Yeah. Well, OK, well, that complicates what I was saying, but I was like, I was just going to uh, sort of, you know, my little caveat to listeners here, because I'm sure there's a lot of people who might know a lot about theology or Christian theology specifically or any of that stuff. It's like, I have not, I tried to read the Bible, I think one time, uh, I do not have the background of the Bible, which is basically in heavy conversation with, with this book. And there's just a ton of like scriptural quotations and all this kind of stuff. And, a lot of the situations are just plucked directly from the Bible and turned into like, right? Like just characters from the Bible are in there. And the, Gabe, did you read the Bible too? Because I feel uh, like you should have. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't. Not that's that would that would have been it, that would have been pushing even my time constraints. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I mean, this book is basically you know it's kind of like a Marvel movie. It's like a lot of references. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's right, dude. <laughs> um, well, anyway. So, Matt, this was uh, your pick, and um, I'm sure inquiring minds, specifically Paul, want to know, why did you pick this? Yeah, and most importantly, Matt, why did you do this to me? Well, I... (laughs) This this was a personal (laughs) assault on Paul. It feels like it. Because my running joke, and this is true, this is only about 10% of what I think about when I make a choice about what to read, is at this point now, I know Paul's taste so intimately, how can I troll him? And mm, I fun. just and I knew and I was right that this was something yeah. you would very deeply 
dislike and struggle together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> While I yeah, very I had much a hell of a week this week, <laughs> being trolled by my friend <laughs> just for hours. But that's only a small. That's only a small. That's just a small reason why. Sure, sure. Tiny reason. Well, then what's the re- what are the other reasons? Uh, just because you know, I I had known it was an important uh piece of religious writing. Uh, I went to I you know, I was raised Catholic, and uh, I went to like CCD like church school, and I went to a Jesuit college. Uh, who you know the Jesuits, Bunyan would fucking hate them. But uh, hundred on <laughs> on God, yeah, on God, you know the devil's henchmen essentially. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, so it's just you know I I I studied you know I was kind of you kind of had to take some theology classes in the you know sort of uh pedagogical structure of a jesuit university and i i so i read some stuff and i don't know i also just like random um random like w- ways in which i see it ref- i've seen it referenced over the course of my life uh like the uh this the uh like vanity fair like the magazine vanity fair mm-hmm. or or uh, the or the thackeray novel yeah right but I was just thinking, like, even just the weird, the fact that there's like a glossy magazine in contemporary culture, Vanity Fair, which I don't, is it still printed? Yeah, and it's also hilarious that Vanity Fair, like, they're like, oh yeah, this sounds cool, but it's literally like the, a magazine about consumer culture and like outward appearance and like that's oh no, they like totally the, cynically the chose that name, trolling, super troll. <laughs> yeah, that has no. to be where the term came from, right? This book. Yeah, yeah, they came yeah. from this book. So they totally knew what they were doing. Yeah, and just like uh, I had seen that uh, William Blake picture before of uh, Christian fighting Apollyon, and uh, I'd heard of the Slough of Despond or the Slough of Despond rather, and all this kind of stuff, just floating around culturally. And I was just curious to finally read where all that stuff came from, and uh, sort of engage with this this proto novel potentially mm-hmm. uh, that's just extremely famous and very influential. Well, if, if you read, it, you know, it, yeah, it's one of those things that you just see pop up if you're reading widely, like everywhere. Like uh, it, it's 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 a book that is just like referenced in a lot of like particularly like Victorian era literature uh, references it a lot because he ha- he sort of had a renaissance in that, you know, time period. And we can talk about why that was if on the Patreon segment or something. I don't want to get into it now. But, you know, um I, I think, you know, there's a few characters in Dickens novels that, that reference it. They, uh, I think I'm pretty sure Huck Finn reads it in uh, <laughs> at one point, And there's a couple lines in Huck Finn about Pilgrim's Progress. So. So, yeah, it's like very just around in literature. Yeah. And he was famous even at the time, too. It was like big then. Yeah, they made him write a sequel, right? They yeah. literally did, yeah. <laughs> they yeah. Made him They're like, what happens were next? Yeah. yeah, yeah. What happened to the family? Well, what, yeah. I think probably later we'll we'll get into him being kind of like he was sort of like a, the first kind of like celebrity, celebrity. author slash preacher, or, or yeah. one of one of the first. Right, like the one who was like known. Mm-hmm. What was Sh- Sh- Shakespeare would have been around a similar time. Right? Shakespeare was before this. prior the Elizabethan yeah. era. Right? Uh-huh. Like the, yeah, I I'm not good with dates, but before this. Not um, that soon before, though. Yeah, probably. Or, not. Yeah. All right. This, yeah. Ignorance on display here. Um, but, uh, so, uh, what's this book about, Matt? Do you want to take us through like a just a brief? Uh, the quickest way I can describe it is it's the uh, it's the spiritual journey. Well, there's two parts, right? So it's a spiritual journey in part one of a man named Christian, you know, <laughs> not trying to like hide anything there. Right. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. We should specify. We did read both parts for this because if you just say the pilgrim's progress, sometimes you're just referring to part one, but there's, as Paul mentioned, there's two parts uh, and we did read both. Yeah. Uh, which I'm glad to, cause they, you know, it's not just like a, a toss off sequel. It's like interestingly built upon, but yeah, the first, the first part is just uh, this man's uh, sort of, spiritual journey towards you know salvation essentially from being a lowly sinner uh and going on this kind of like fun kind of fantasy it's an rpg it's an you can just say it's an rpg he gathered he gathers his party fights bosses 
and he goes meets to, a lot of NPCs. Meets a ton of NPCs. <laughs> goes on quests. Goes on quests. Goes to different cities. It's the Dark Souls of books. Uh, <laughs> a lonely, tr- tr- lone traveler uh, endures great hardship to become, you know, to become uh, part of the heavenly host. But yeah, I mean, I mean, like, right? It's it's a journey, and the and the guy, you know, goes through a lot of these um, allegorical and and metaphorical situations of what happens when one is beset by doubt or other people coming in to kind of like you know physically stop him or or so- people who are like trying to infect him with uh bad ideas and all this kind of stuff and uh ultimately he 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 does make it um and then in uh part 2 it is uh, about uh it's made it's it's briefly touched upon that he's kind of like uh He's left a wife and four children. Chris. Well, I, I I think that's actually kind of a at the beginning. It's, a major of, the, it's kind of a major plot a point major at part, the beginning yeah. of part one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He ends uh, up like leaving the village and because ev- like the the villagers are kind of some are upset, some go with him, but it, people like his family is crying and it's like a big event. Everyone kind of everyone kind of thinks he's a doofus for for doing this, like a deadbeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, <laughs> like, what are you doing? Uh, you know, and that's part of one of the many doubts and things he has to contend with uh but part two is actually about the family who sort of uh his wife's name is christiana (laughs) this is christian and christiana just girl christian uh honestly though it uh uh, uh, their two names are actually the most subtle of anyone in the in either part (laughs) that is true (laughs) true. that is yeah (laughs) there's some nuance there yeah there's literally just like people just named like like Mr. Idiot Shithead. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Liar. Like Mr. Mr. Liar. Mr. Going to Hell. Yeah. Mr. Up on a Hill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like literally anything. <laughs> Mr. S- Mr. Smokes a Pipe. And he approached smoking yeah. his pipe. Yeah. yeah. Just stuff like that. Um, well, his name was changed, too. I'm trying to f- remember what it was. Uh, right? Who's? In the story? Christian. Yeah, wasn't it like pretty early on, like the first couple pages, like changed from something? Am I tripping? Well, also, I okay, thought he so was like given the name Christian. Oh, it's, maybe when he converts or has the conversion. Am I tripping? I thought I. Because the other thing, well, let me conclude the what the second part is about. It's just that's it's just a, a a retreading of the same the same path that Christian took in the first part, except now it's been changed by the fact that he's made the journey, and it's his wife and children who are making it now, and there's a very different sort of take on on the process of, you know, making your way to the celestial city and, and being saved. Mm-hmm. But it's also um, all framed within, you know, the, uh, like, being a dream of, yes. a, of an observer. I, 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 actually, and this is pedantic, but I actually think it's interesting is that Bunyan – which right like you said matt this is an interesting interesting literary device that he's using because the opening is like oh i went out and i fell asleep and then kind of here's what i saw yeah but but bunyan titles it the similitude of a dream it's delivered yeah. in the, in the so it's not even he's not even claiming that it was a dream exactly but he's telling you like a, as if it were a dream which is i think like a, another kind of interesting like double layer to the question and at some point he wakes up, but it's still because right. At some point he d- like the dreamer wakes up, but is still observing the similitude of a dream. Like he's not fully there. Yeah, the actual full title is "The Pilgrim's Progress from This World to That Which Is to Come," delivered under the similitude of a dream, wherein is discovered the manner of his setting out his dangerous journey and safe arrival at the desired country. <laughs> yeah, so that's the actual title. RPG. RPG. Um, yeah, that's that's my synopsis. Yeah. Cool. So, where to begin with this? Uh, Are you guys religious? <laughs> <laughs> Were you raised religious at all? I, I was. I was not. We uh, uh, we attended like some, you know, uh, whatever, like U- Unitarian type stuff on ah. cr- on like Christmas and Easter, up until I was old enough to like really be obstinate about not wanting to go and then they didn't make me anymore right so i would be 
there is a character in this book named Obstinate at the beginning. Yeah, that's so, right. That's that, right. That, so was, that's who you... that was me when I was uh, when I was eight or whatever. Yeah, Paul. Yeah, I. Uh, Although my grand raised... my grandfather was a minister. Sorry. Oh. oh, really? I was raised Methodist, and I I kind of had the same experience as Gabe. Is like eventually my parents just like stopped giving a shit whether I went to church or not, and then they stopped going to it just kind of like slowly fell apart thankfully <laughs> yeah tipping your tipping your hand there paul <laughs> yes that is my hand no, no it's fine i don't care i was just classic catholic yeah just a class absolute classic i i got baptized i never got uh confirmed or anything but oh okay well i was baptized at like a really old age i forget how old but i remember being like you were baptized i didn't even know that about yeah you. like really late i don't know why I don't even really know what is Methodist. It's you I don't know. Dude, I mean, it's really the, really lenient. All the Protestant <laughs> like, like you know branches and roots or whatever. Well, this is the star. I mean, Puritan is one of them. True. Uh, but I, I, there's like that Bill Burr joke about how like because I had the same thing, just sort of like I got three younger brothers and it was just kind of like an ordeal to get out of the house on Sunday morning. So like. <laughs> Uh, we just sort of slowly stopped going, and he described it metaphorically as like when the you know in curling, the sport where they just sort of like release the <laughs> the like weird thing and just let it slowly slide away from them, and you yeah. just kind of like back away from it. Like the I stone. guess we're done. We're done. I'm yeah. pretty sure it's just called the stone. <laughs> the stone. Yeah, and then it'll just land wherever it lands. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think one one one. Um, and I will say that this book is already affecting my life in positive ways because I've adopted the phrase profitably discourse into my lexicon instead That's good. of That's uh, going to be big for you. Instead of debate or discuss or argue, <laughs> I'm, I'm now going to say like let's let, let, let's profitably discourse about this. <laughs> yeah, seek the weaknesses of and, <laughs> and exploit. Yeah, yeah, no no no. I now I'm I'm profitable discourse pilled. Um, <laughs> yeah, this this book had the uh, exact opposite effect on me. <laughs> you're just, you're, you're just, you're, I'm you're, like banishing all Paul's new game, new game atheist plus right now. He's just like, yeah. <laughs> Paul's doing an atheist run of the Pilgrim's Progress. Matt, if the, if this book choice was a prank on me, why didn't you just like, just like come over and stigmata me? That would have been better. <laughs> Or just, uh, like, crucify me for a day and not laugh. No, Funny this prank, Paul. This um, is worse. Uh, Paul, so Paul didn't like it. Um, well, it's a tough read. I mean, it, uh, it's... Uh, I mean, obviously, it's, you know, it's old... It's, it's like old, the Bible. It's old-timey language. It's, 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 it's slow going, and it's, you know... I, w- I wouldn't say the story is particularly complicated, but there's a lot of you know, theological digressions and kind of debates about obscure points of, you know, Calvinism, like what are, what are today, you know, but I imagine what were then familiar obscure points of Calvinist theology and, and the various heresies that uh, they believed the, their opponents to be um, committing. Yeah. But, it's in conversation directly, like with its immediate context, right? Like historical. Yeah. Context. So that's what I was going to say. I was going to say a, a, a a profitable place to begin our discourse is probably a little bit about Bunyan's <laughs> Bunyan's sort of life and context, uh, which is, you know, kind of immediately post English civil war during the restoration of the monarchy, uh, where there was a lot of, you know, religious persecution, frankly, against the non Anglican, uh, right. you know, religious sects, Puritanism and Calvinism, uh, you know, among them. Um, and Bunyan was in prison for a, a lot of his life. <laughs> a long ass yeah. time, dude. Twelve years. Mm-hmm. Right. He, Which he, is when he wrote this. Yeah. I think. Uh, definitely the first part. Yeah. Yeah. What was he in prison for? Wasn't it just like sinning, like general well, just, sinning? F- yeah, for 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 being a different of a different religious. Yeah, he it was. I, I believe the specific charge was that he like refused to stop preaching at his church. He was a manic street preacher. Well, he also later in, I don't I don't know the timeline exactly, but he also did have a church at in Bedford, uh, yeah. where he was a, a preacher. So I don't know I forget where he was like when he was in prison exactly. Well, he just yeah he he was he was uh like yeah he was preaching and getting these small congregations of Puritans and stuff and <coughs> this you know 
yeah, the restoration of, uh, of Charles II had happened, and Charles was pissed because they chopped off his dad's head, uh, <laughs> you know, before, like, ten years earlier. So he was, he didn't, like, outright, like, just start genociding, you know, like, Protestants or whatever, but he just yeah. did this, like, kind of, like, weird thing where he's like, well, if you don't have a preaching license <laughs> that needs to be approved by, you know, my cronies up in the church in, of England, then, right. like, you'll be arrested, and so... Yeah. It was yeah, it was, it was yeah, exactly. Just classic uh You chopped off me dad's head. Classic just bureau like bureaucratic uh like killing you with red tape. Bureaucratic crackdown. Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> yeah. oh, if you want to preach you have to apply for a license, but the own the and uh, we're 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 not biased. We're just we're all just like uh Anglican Church of England people and eh, if all only those people get approved, total coincidence. It's just a coincidence. <laughs> it's just business. <laughs> right. It's not personal. <laughs> it's just business. Yeah, so that, that's kind of... He was imprisoned for 12 years, but I, I heard tell that, you know, it wasn't exactly like he was in a dungeon for no. 12 years. Like, there was a point where apparently he could even, like, leave on good faith for a little while and go, yeah. like, see his family or whatnot. Yeah. They do that in, like, in UK prisons now. You can, yeah, you can like, actually just, like, leave. They have like a much lenient, much more lenient system than we do. Yeah, well, like if you've been there prisons. for like twenty years, you can like go out into the town and just like get coffee and stuff. I mean, based honestly, our prison system yeah. is evil as fuck. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you just don't believe in good behavior, or, yeah, any sort of yeah. salvation for anybody. Uh, but yeah, Bunyan. So so Bunyan was. Uh, he was describing why he would. I feel like in a lot of ways, the first part is basically uh, autobiography of sorts of just Bunyan's own conversion and, and his sort of his description of like why he would leave his because I, I, I know he was guilty well, about like being in prison, but also like wanting to do a principled stand. And I feel like he was wrestling with that idea. His kids had and, and wife had nothing, you know, yeah. the whole time. And he, he was like, fuck. Like, he was Bunyan was always sort of on the from what I understand, like on the <clears throat> always skirting like political controversy. He was never like really explicitly political in, in terms of like, you know, but, but he was certainly steadfast in his religious beliefs and his gonna, I'm going to keep on preaching this. Um, and he did actually, you know, to, to get to your point, Matt, he did write a, a like a spiritual autobiography like oh, ten, true. like ten, tw- ten or twelve years before this, um, called Grace Abounding, right? And Probably the second most famous thing he did, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and that was uh, that was also written when he was in prison, or that 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 was. So I don't actually, I actually don't know if this was written written when he was in prison or not. Um, but that mm-hmm. one for sure was, and yeah, I think that this. Christian is clearly a self insert to some degree of Bunyan. Um, and, you know, in that book, Bunyan describes sort of his, his conversion experience, which is a very popular sort of genre. And, and at the church that he preached at, one of the things that they were sort of required of new members was that they got up and kind of gave a speech about their conversion experiences. Um, right. Which is an important sounds like part. like AA for Christians. <laughs> Whatever the well, opposite AA is, is like reverse that, AA. Yeah, that. <laughs> Isn't AA Christian? Uh, well, no, they they they're they're they. Non, you know, your higher power. Yeah, or whatever, but yeah, exactly. It's, it's wasn't it founded yeah, by? It's it's basically Christian. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's what I'm trying <laughs> yeah. to get at. Yeah. Um, Shout outs to David Foster Wallace. Right. You profess your sins in that, and it's like uh, uh, you know, in order to like forgive yourself and there and then become you know, cleansed of, of your addiction in that. But it's like in this, isn't it an important part of, uh, I guess, Calvinist doctrine that y- you, you are born a sinner, right? The Puritans, right? They're pretty hard. Like men, man is fallen. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you can't just be like, I believe in God. Now you have to have like, uh, right. Isn't there some sort of like the, the reason you profess and, and your conversion story is like, here's how, I am now on the path. Like, well, the whole thing about Calvinism, you know, was sort of the whole, one of the one of the major controversies between Calvinism and 
Puritanism and a lot of these other religious sects that existed at the time. And again, we're not religious scholars, so you know, don't. Yeah, please, just, we are just floundering around here a little bit. Please, yeah. please don't uh, don't nitpick us too bad, but do do send corrections if we're egregiously wrong. Educate about us, yeah, and profitably discourse Pro- with us. Thank you, <laughs> thank yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, the big thing about Calvinism is is that everyone from the day they're born or conceived or whatever uh it's already set in stone whether you're going to heaven or not right so yeah, the, 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 the big the big distinction was whether or not you know your works can so so you know it's it's salvation through works or salvation through faith and and word alone right Be, the yes. word being the bible and so the 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 distinction is that other religious sects thought that you could you know, if you change your behavior, if you started being better, being a better Christian, that would sort of, you know, increase, you know, proportionally increase your chances of getting to heaven. Uh, right. You know, the Catholics believe this in, in some ways. Right. You have to do the sacraments. You have to do certain behaviors. Right. The, Cal- the Calvinists are like, fuck that, dude. It's like set in stone, like already. And yeah. so it's pretty so, fatalist. Like uh, totally. I don't know how that, that doesn't make any sense to me. Well, so 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 basically, <laughs> neither, so then, neither really. well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's it's a not a popular view anymore. Um, you, <laughs> you, there's no you know real Calvinist churches around these days, right? But so their whole thing was that your behaviors and sort of your um, lot in life is not gonna not gonna change your um, uh, likelihood of going to heaven or not but it's going to be evidence for other people to sort of evaluate whether you're going to so it's basically like a, a little detective game of like if you yeah. are a drunkard or a licentious or an adulterer or whatever it's you, you're not going to hell because of those things you are doing those things because you were always going to go to hell anyway right so it's like a, it's that it's the inverse of that causal relationship if that makes sense which is an interesting mind game to get into you know what i mean like i was For reading sure. this and being like and and what it does also i feel like is correctly identify all the ways in which other things like catholicism right and like whatever uh papacy sh- shit they hate uh can become hypocritical i mean it for sure is really good at like exposing how somebody can just behave in certain ways and this is a huge part of the story like a lot of these characters that try and like thwart christian off of the path are these people that for various reasons are try and convince him that you can just sort of behave and not act you know and and that's good enough and which is why works is 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 the the thing that he most rails against in its many forms right yes because works is a lot of things, one of which just being a sort of general change in, in behavior and just, I'm saying prayers and I'm a good person. It's like, you're going to hell. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, you're, yeah exactly. You're actually not at all, yeah. Are you referring to the chapter with uh, the character Shame? Can you remind me a what little bit? Sh- is, saying? Is, is that from part one or two? I forget. Paul. That's from part one where he meets Shame and he th- he's like, well, a better name for Shame would be Shameless. And he, and he has a conversation ah. with Shame. Yes, what does I he thought say? that was one of the few chapters that jumped out to me. All right, well, they why didn't did want me to? It didn't want me to. Or I didn't want to spray bear spray in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, so why did it? Why did that conversation jump out to you? Because I have a couple that it? jumped out. I, like I, I mean, the ones that jumped out to me, and um, uh, just a minor, also just like literary point as well. I think the way Bunyan handles the allegorical nature of the names, like we were talking about, like everyone is named like Mister. You know, uh, do no good. Do no, yeah, literally, Mister Do no good or Mister Licentious or Mrs. Wanton. Yeah, exactly. And so (laughs) I I think it's interesting that like the names both serve the sort of allegorical function that Bunyan is trying to do, but but are also expressive of the Calvinist doctrine that like you just are who you are, and and you don't have any. There's no like real choice in the matter in the long run in terms of whether or not you're saved. And I think that that was like a sort of really interesting double meaning to all these names. Like the names are allegorical functions literarily, but they're also meant to express inherent qualities from a Calvinist perspective about these people. Yeah. Here are the sins you've been tainted with that will forever be on you and lead you to hell. Yeah. Right. So just because I didn't do that much research, was, was he a Calvinist then? 
Yeah, he yeah. was. So he yeah. okay. That makes a lot more sense to me now because he was obviously struggling with his beliefs. Yeah, I and, and also by having Christian, you know, reach salvation. Jerusalem. Yeah. Scion, the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the other thing uh, sure you were, you were saying that like uh, he doesn't get explicitly political, but right. I mean this this is this is in a time when separation of church and state was both weirdly happening, but also not right. You had Def- like the yeah. English Civil War is an interesting, you know, kind of halfway point between doing something like that like getting rid of a, a divinely ordained sovereign and also you know the having the parliamentary side of things be a bu- well basically yeah Cromwellian Puritans well and that yeah and and right so you know uh Bunyan would definitely have been on on that side sort of along he fought with, for the parliamentary uh, side right right uh, you know along with like John Locke and other people who were you know uh, thinking around th- that that sort of thing at that time about about questions of sort of toleration and uh, like freedom and and so on and so forth, right? And so, of course, that side lost, right? The monarchy was reinstated, and the Anglican right. Church did become, you know, more like the official church of the state, and uh, you know, the rest is history. But I just my just point was right, just like. Uh Religion was politics, essentially. It was 100%. like the method of rule and like how you go about doing that. Right. Um, so in a way, this is a political, I guess, if you wanted to say that, uh, well, sort of treatise in a, in a sense. Yeah. And you can definitely like you can definitely think about uh, a lot of sort of like little details of the time that may or may not be sort of interpretively. Uh, uh, in the book so like for example like uh, you know Vanity Fair which is right. one of which is one of the stops that he makes on the journey with I, I think he's with Hopeful at that point or no no, no. Who, yeah who, who dies Faithful gets killed at yeah. Vanity so Fair so Faithful yeah. gets essentially martyred at Vanity Fair and um, you know Vanity Fair is this consumerist it's like a big marketplace and they're just kind of like uh, you know very kind of um libertine sexually and with their all their behaviors and so on hedonistic and so, yeah exactly and so one sort of question is is that meant to be a sort of general reference to like worldliness or is he talking specifically about like post uh restoration london and the sort of like you said matt the reign of charles who was very uh it was charles the first right yeah who was known in his court to be very sort of that way he was a, he was you know a drunk he argued he like uh, reportedly you know con- consorted with sex workers and so on and so forth he was a dandy he's like pageantry yeah he wore, wore fancy clothes yeah exactly so there's like some arguable political call outs in here but they're they're very you know interpretively open i would say well actually i can i read a part of Van- the vanity fair portion please because this felt like one of the few nods to a sort of political and social critique of like the time which is just uh i mean for me i have the penguin penguin classics or whatever but it's on page 79 uh therefore at this fair are all such merchandise sold as houses lands trades places honors preferments titles countries kingdoms lusts pleasures and delights of all sorts as whores bawds wives husbands children masters servants lives Blood, bodies, soul, souls, silver, gold, pearls, precious stones, and whatnot. So I just think it's interesting that things like titles. Ba- base, dude. Capitalism bad. Titles and performance and then blood and then souls mixed with silver and gold. I, I You know, that feels pretty much like a critique of uh, all that kind of stuff. You know, like. Definitely. The politics of just like you, you can buy your way in and whatever. Paul, did you find that that uh, conversation you were talking about before with shame? No, I just I keep looking for. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, no, 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 it's all good. Because <laughs> I did, I did like it, and it, it did bring up kind of like the hedonistic out out outlook a little bit, like, uh, and it kind of related to the Vanity Fair section a bit. But I was hoping you guys remembered that too. I'm trying to find it online, it might be easier. There are quite. A, I mean, like, there, the language is. Uh, something that doesn't stick as effectively to my 21st century brain. And there are quite a few 
<laughs> discussions with quite a few people that just sort of represent a particular vice or mode of thought. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of yeah, hard the, to remember. The shame guy, I mean, I just remember it being like he, he was kind of faced with a, with a nihilistic person that was just totally defiant of everything that he believed in. And they were having a conversation with him. And uh, they kind of feel like they end up getting the best of him by the end of it. But I remember walking away from the chapter and just being like, I'm not sure if you really did, but maybe that's just my own. <laughs> that's because that's you're a shameless atheist. Yeah. <laughs> that would be your name. My, I mean, my, my, I, I can, my favorite kind of conversation they have, uh, and then maybe we should talk about part two a little bit because we're already – you know, running up on the hour, 20, 20 minutes out. Dang. But oh, uh, I know um, feels like we literally just started. Uh, yeah. So w- my favorite conversation was with um, talkative uh, who was one of their, their interlocutors, one of these sort of false. Um, and, and some of them are kind of like false Christians or false uh, religious people. And some are more explicitly like, like they meet someone early on call whose name is just atheist and he's sort of yeah. like he's like, oh, I already went up ahead. I've done all the work you're about to do, and there's just nothing there, dude. It's all bullshit, man. The city doesn't exist. It's all BS. God's turn, not real, just dude. Turn around now. Reddit. But, but um, God, yeah, Reddit. Doffa the fedora. Be on your <laughs> way. Um, Rick but, Sanchez. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can you imagine if there was just someone named there's Rick Sanchez up there. Yeah. <laughs> in this? <laughs> um, but. Uh, so talkative is one of these people who is he's essentially a sophist, right? Like he's like, oh, yeah, I'm a good Christian. He can quote Bible verses and so on and so forth. And then and then faithful is like. This guy's a little sus. I, I don't really know if this guy's got got it in his heart. And he basically debate bros him hard and, you know, pins him down on all these points. And it, it, it was just really interesting to see that like form of. Uh, you know, profitable discourse resu- result in what is, you know, contemporarily recognizable as essentially like a huge own. You're right. Yeah. The guy got owned. Yeah. In a forum. And and I think, again, it speaks to the Calvinism of Bunyan, where it's like you can talk and you can memorize verses and you can do all the sort of outward behaviors. But it's about the the sort of subjective experience of of, you know, God and conversion and all of these things that are, again, not going to change your fate, but maybe clues to it. Right. Is there so a, a term the for that novel. that he used for, like, a, a person? Or is there a term like that for someone like that? I mean, like, mean? I, like I said, I think he's just kind of like a sophist, which is someone who can, like, speak really well, and but doesn't actually make any points, doesn't actually have any kind of arguments. and Which is, I think was the critique of uh, Jesuits at the time. Basically a faker. Yeah. 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 Person who's so far afield from, you know, the actual grace of God and they're just sort of intellectually exercising it without, you know, at all being connected to it. Which is a lot of the characters. There's a couple others, you know. For sure. Um, do you guys want to talk about part two a little bit? Yeah, might as well. Uh, obviously, we're going to come back to there's a I, I mean. I've got a shit ton more to say about all of this. Yeah. I'm sure we all do. Uh, and if you want to hear that, you can subscribe to our Patreon, www.patreon.com slash spinecrackers, where you can hear all of our full episodes, full oh. discussions, uh, what? <laughs> just sighing just, deeply. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I'm, I'm kind of sighing because I was trying to look something up for the last like five minutes and I finally <laughs> found it, but the, we stopped talking about no, it. No, no, so. no. Yeah, yeah, just it, dog, it, dog ear it, baby. Yeah, dog ear we'll it for back. the... Yeah, hold on to it for, for the, the Patreon or yeah. right now? Yeah, we'll oh, circle Patreon, back. Okay. Yeah, we'll circle back for the Patreon. Um, that, so at the Patreon, you can hear all of our full discussions. They usually run anywhere from two and a half to the, the three hours, so you're getting an hour and a half, uh, two hours more of uh, our thoughts on the book. Um, and bonus videos. Paul just uploaded a sick video about French comics. And uh, yeah, boy. So yeah. Anyway. Uh-huh. So let's talk about part two and Chris, <laughs> Christiana and the the rest of Christian's family. Um, I forget. By she just has a sort of dream at some point as well, doesn't she? Or is she she dreams about people having a conversation about stealing her soul, 
uh, I guess, right? Well, she, is, she 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 like sees figures. Like she has a fucking like night terror, sleep paralysis. Yeah, like yeah, uh, over her bed, like talking about like, oh man, hopefully she doesn't follow the same path as her husband, because if she does, then she'll be. She can get to the city and it, it, brats will never get her soul yeah, then. Yeah, 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 basically, literally, and so she's that's like, how one of them sounds. So she's spooked and she's <laughs> like, oh, "Oh fuck, I gotta go." Yeah, we cannot lose this soul, or Satan shall be angry with us. Yeah, <laughs> they should be playing too much Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I can draw that's a couple though. parallels between this and Elden Ring. First that's, of all, that's Patreon content, baby. All right, <laughs> they're pretty superficial, but oh. Say, I, I'm I'm writing it down though. I do want to know. Just um, biblical words used. Um, yeah. So she she I don't know what that's supposed to signify. I, I just feel like it's it's truly like like uh, Christian, and I think by extension, you know, in, this is true biographically, right? But like uh, Bunyan. Didn't he like see feel demons speaking to him, and he had that very like Saint Anthony kind of you know he felt plagued by literal. Well, yeah, I mean, this is some goblins and th- shit. This is something else that we're definitely gonna have to get into in the in the Patreon because we just don't have time. But Bunyan's uh, kind of relationship to mental health is like, a big topic in the scholarship about him, and sort yeah, I was of surprised to hear that. Yeah, theories about him, you know, having having. T- depression and OCD and like you know intrusive thoughts, right. um, and I, 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 if I'm remembering correctly, he actually wrote a few pamphlets like about how to deal with those sorts of feelings. Yeah. Um, wow. It's like a 15th century zine. Or yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and I think that comes. Yeah. I think that comes through like both in in uh, the first part and this in the second part in that in Christiana's kind of realization. So, you know, she's she's sort of like um appropriately lamenting not not heeding her husband's words and kind of like you know, I I, I was so close to him and I and I did not heed his wisdom and and so she sets out to follow in his footsteps. Uh and I, I don't know, like what struck me about the second part uh, which I think is is like important to read as opposed to just the first part, if you're going to get the full breadth, because I think there's a way more like hundred percent, like weird nuanced theological ideas being played with here than before. The other one's like a comparatively more straightforward. And this one, it's like what it means for someone to have like blazed the trail and how that's affected the world that was you. So you go to all these places that, you know, this was the, the first one was a huge fucking smash hit. So everyone's like, oh, my God, the Slough of Despawn, she's going there, remember? Uh, and all these places. But they're, like, altered and, and in some in some ways completely reversed. It's like she's not Christian. She's a different person. And, like, these, like, uh, realms and trials uh, change their tone for her sometimes. Well, and, and, yeah, 100%. And I think Bunyan, like like you said, Matt, like, he, he refuses to just, like, replay the hits you know what i mean like it really is a different thing like they do sometimes go to the same places but a lot of the in in some cases there's just like actual signs like oh yeah christian went this way and he it was a fuck up so don't go this way it's true actually christian in the in the second part is almost a celebrity himself because i forget how long it's true. been but like many years but so he's he's already kind of a martyr slash uh you know hero of legend to the people yes uh, uh, yeah go ahead uh, Paul. like people know that he like or, or someone or she asks some guy in the beginning of the second part like have you heard of this guy my husband or whatever and he's like oh yeah sure the guy who like made it and he it's slayed like, the demon dude i fucking yeah, love he's that guy awesome <laughs> yeah he's a hero i mean i think one of the things that jumps out to me as a distinction between the first part and the second part is that the first part is you know, again, sort of like a it's reductive to say this a little bit, but it's sort of a, a, a fictionalization of Bunyan's own kind of, a, you know, conversion experience. But it's very individual. It's very like Christian has a few, uh, uh, you know, uh, party members that go along with the way. He's got faithful and hopeful. And then, yeah, um, I think one of the most interesting characters in the whole, st- whole story, ignorance at the end, 
who I yeah. really want to talk about in the in the patron segment because I don't know what ignorance was ignorant of. Um, but the second part with Christiana and the, and her children, it's a much more group sort of uh, you know like holistic like there's a lot of people that they, they wind the up fellowship yeah it's like the fellowship of the fucking ring like legit <laughs> yeah they gather like a ton of different people they have mr uh, greatheart and they have um valiant mercy. valiant for truth yeah um and all of her her children yeah mercy i forget all the children's names uh mercy is like her kind of maid right who comes along eventually i th- I, w- I find her to be the, yeah like the second most significant character like for mr sure. greatheart like He's cool. He's like their cool bodyguard slash like warrior. He's uh, the he's the tank. He's the tank in the party. <laughs> he absolutely Mercy's like the freaking uh, healer. Yeah. Yeah. Christiana's just a paladin or something. Uh. Yeah. He's he kind of you know, he's there to just help whoever needs the help, and he 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 just fucks up like giants and bandits and stuff. Uh. But Mercy, one of the things that I noticed was like kind of th- that I found interesting that was like yeah doubly more emphasized in the second part was um the necessity of friendship like the necessity yes. of like you don't do this alone holy community uh, yeah which like, was like, like <laughs> wholesome man no I like, I, yeah yeah because I, I, yeah, I, I think that these two things like form a dyad for Bunyan right like there's the individual experience of God and Christ which is the first part. And then there's like the formation of the, the sort of ideal of the, the, you know, the, the flock, the sort of godly community together, yeah. like, and that, and both parts are like equally necessary. Yeah. I feel like you guys and are like, trying to convert me. <laughs> I mean, I, well, you know, yeah, we want your soul saved. That's true. That's what it feels like, <laughs> um, well, through the power of friendship, honestly, yeah, it's it's like My Little Pony. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. Yeah. So we're trying now to make this relatable to into. so. Yeah now, <laughs> yeah, now Cutie Pie, I can get into. <laughs> so you didn't tell me Christiana's Rainbow Dash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, we're trying to fold in as many demographics as possible. We're like, it's like Star Wars. It's like uh, Elden Ring. Elden Ring. It's What's like hot? My Little Pony. What's hot? It's like right Monty now? Python. Yeah. It's like The Mandalorian. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like the Mandalorian. <laughs> um, I mean, it's true that like you know, like you could make these kind of like facile, just sort of Joseph Campbell level takes, right, about the hero's journey. I mean, it is that. Yeah. And it's an old, t- you know, this all that all that kind of stuff like p- predates by a lot. This particular version, you know, you've like Gilgamesh and shit. So right. You know, the journey is a is a tried and true. I guess genre at this point in a, in a way or, or yeah, I think, yeah I, would, I think it's a genre anyway. Yeah. Um, what else, what else jumped out to you all about part two, just while we're on it? Uh, I, I, I felt like, I felt like, like, like we said, like part two is in some ways more, I don't want to say it's more straightforward, but it's also, you know, it's it's sort of like the first. It's like part. It's like a remix. It's like part one, but remix because they do go to some of the same places. Christian's been there already, and it's a vibe. They're like, we love Christian. No, I feel like part two was more complicated. You thought so? Okay, how come? Yeah, just because like I feel like this is the actual state of things, and like actually, what is the more important thing to be to be done? Right? Mm. Like you have. You know, one man's kind of conversion and then his journey and he's got a couple friends. But like the the real thing is like you get a lot more people who would otherwise maybe have have never made a pilgrimage or become a spiritual pilgrim towards Sion or whatever uh, being that and becoming that. And, And like I feel like that's. That's that's it's like a missionary thing. It's like that's way more important is like to convince how do you get all these disparate people with these mm. with these different sins to to see why they would want to take the you know the path um and how you know you were just talking about how like you can be like ah oh, i'm mrs wanton you know i'm 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 you know i i'm promiscuous and like i just love the pleasures of the flesh and it's like that could mean you're doomed eternally and you always were obviously 
but it doesn't necessarily mean that. And, uh, you know, that that, that kind of weird tension in, in predestination theology where it's like, uh, it could be a sign that you were doomed and you should just give in, but also you're always constantly trying to, like, seek out how maybe you might be saved in your behaviors and your orientation towards the world. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's helpful and, and and true because I also think that like there's a lot of people in in part two where I was like I, I like I was just like because okay because okay, I, I want to talk about ignorance but no you know no spoilers but ignorance is with Christian in the first part for a lot of the journey and you know and he doesn't make it he doesn't get into the city he gets dragged off to hell yeah and there were definitely that was a brutal part it was brutal yeah <laughs> I, I I, I want to talk about him a lot more um but it, in part two, there was there were definitely some people where I was like, oh, they're not going to fucking make it like no way, <laughs> you know, because like, mm-hmm. like she meets um like this father and daughter named D- Mr. Despondency and his daughter's name is Much Afraid. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so I was just like, oh, they're not going to fucking make it. No way. Yeah. But they do. And so I think like that speaks, Matt, to your sort of contention that part two yeah. is, a, is about kind of diversifying our understanding of, you know, who can who can, you know, occupy this role of the pilgrim. It's not just this purely kind of outwardly pure hearted, uh, pious, Christian, faithful, hopeful. There's all these people who have a lot of self-doubt, who have a lot of, you know, other kind of uh, uh, reservations who can can walk the path and and make it to the end and that's the complexity of like the whole calvinist predestination thing too it's like right. it's why it's such an interesting concept to me yeah. like you know it's confusing but for the reasons that like you just you're dealing with some it's like the free will debate or something it's like you're, you're dealing with uh yeah this just tension between like what's the point and also that's the point uh in a lot of the ways so so I, I'm losing my thread, but yeah, just like yeah. people being pulled in. Who, because, oh, I guess my point was that like you, you, it's a way to avoid, and I think they would argue maybe the, the superficiality of the like works oriented uh, way of doing things. Where <coughs> it's like basically just you avoid uh, hypocrites. Don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah, the basic, which feels like a very Christian idea, right? Like, we're all sinners. We all, we are all, we're all fallen. And so you don't look at somebody named Mr. Despondency and just go, ah, you're fucked. Assume Bye. he's fucked. <laughs> yeah. You know, or Mr. G- Mr. Greedy Bags or whatever. You, uh, I think Mr. Greedy Bags was fucked. Mrs. Piece of Shit. You just go, like, <laughs> <laughs> you have to assume that potentially... They could be. What sick. if their name was Miss Mrs. Going to Hell? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mister <laughs> Mister Definitely Going Straight to Hell. <laughs> Mister No Fucking Question About It Going to Hell. <laughs> I mean, that would be the biggest twist of all if you yeah. went to heaven. Oh uh, shit! Yeah. That's like that's like a Marvel post credit scene. <laughs> yeah. Mister Definitely Going to Hell <laughs> doesn't go to hell. <laughs> I also thought uh, just briefly in part two, I felt like you really got a. a Bunyan takes a really different approach to the the timeline of the whole thing. Like, I feel like part one, I, there are some details. You know, he talks about he stays at, um, I forget the name of the place that he stays, that little, like, stopover with the lions in front of it. Um, yeah, the interpreter's house? Yeah, I think it's the interpreter's house. Or, uh, uh, and, you know, he's like, oh, he tarried there or he lingered there or whatever. But in part two, you see... Christiana's children grow up and and they get married and like I I feel like there's a they they talk about being at these different places that they stop for weeks and months and years in some cases yeah Uh, and I feel like that was a that felt like a big change to me from part one is just like the sense of scale and time that the process takes in part two versus part one right yeah Yeah, I agree they stop at like uh what is it called like the beautiful yeah, the Place beautiful, the beautiful be- hotel, beautiful house. I think beautiful house, yeah. house like, beautiful. What? Yeah, house beautiful. Yeah, house beautiful yeah. for quite a long time, and that actually did remind me of is because I haven't read the Bible, I don't know, but it did remind me of Monty Python when Lancelot goes into like he's in the in the rain and the storm, and he goes into that place with like all the women. Yeah, 
it was kind of like that. And I don't, I can't, I don't know the reference obviously to the Bible, but it's like seems to be a direct reference to something or other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <for> sure. <laughs> I mean, Monty Python. I, I actually don't know the Monty Python reference, so I do. Yeah, yeah, it's like, and we shall have the oral sex, and blah blah. blah yeah. and he's like, oh, d- 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 what I, uh, you know, he's like, he has to go on this like quest that sucks. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I mean, those guys, those guys knew their stuff. Yeah, the holy hand grenade of Antioch, dude. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. I want to talk a little bit about the. Uh, I don't know if you guys picked up on it or thought it was just like something to glaze over because it's written in the 1600s, but, like, the the transactional social relationships between, like, what is a woman in Christianity and what, you know, that was kind of, like, disturbing, even though I know it's so old. It's like, it's a different time. But uh, I think it's, like, Mr. – is there a guy named Mr. Skills who's, like, going after Mercy? And he's talking about oh. how, like – Mr. Skills, dude, new new pickup artist just dropped. <laughs> was that his name, or did I just make that up? I can't I, I, remember. No, I don't think that. I know who you're talking about. I don't. I, <laughs> I know who you're talking about. I don't think that was his name. Mr. DJ Skills, Skills, dude, with a Z. <laughs> but he was Which kind of like he talks a big game, but he doesn't do anything, right? <laughs> yeah, but he's also like very uh, judgmental on, like Mercy's like making like baskets or blankets or something and he's yeah. like oh that she might be a good wife because she might be uh, a good business wife yes but then you then you kind of find out that she like basically has an etsy store but gives everything away for free to the poor yeah and he's like well now she's a bad yes true <laughs> no that's a really good it's it a really good pickup and she's I, not only like a bad business person but she's now a bad christian I'm and i cannot you know it was yeah. just like disturbing I'm, I'm even though, i know it's so old name. but well but but well but it's it, it's disturbing but it's also a critique of I, I can't find his name but i'm just gonna call him mr skills it's it's <laughs> bunyan is clearly critiquing mr skills there for viewing her in that way right it, it, is that yeah, as, yeah. A, as a transactional like business relationship um obviously there are other problems or or at least other questions about bunyan's treatment of, of women and uh even in his actual life there's a lot of stuff to talk about there but i think in that specific instance um that guy is clearly like meant to come off as a fuck boy yeah basically and also it is it, it's also interesting because like um there's much ado made about like uh women being uniquely sensitive to the spirit of christ you True. know L- like how they were the the, the first there's like that whole segment about how they're they were the first to sort of be at the crucifixion and like lament his death. And like, they were there to like, they were there at the empty tomb first. I yeah. Think. They perceived his resurrection first. Like, like something about like, you know, again, it's, it's, yeah, it's gendered in an old way, but definitely like this, this notion that I think was very striking probably at the time of like, actually women are uniquely capable of like having the, you know, the sort of Puritan Christian spirit. And uh, I think there was even uh, some some j- uh, female, like a female pastor or something, like in the Bedford. Uh, definitely church? not. Definitely not in Bunyan's church. He he was not. Uh, women were not really allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> they had a very specific role, and it was not to speak about religion very much. It, yeah. he, but he, but but as you said, Matt, he was very into the the kind of like. Um, christian you know feminine mystical tradition which is right sophia uh, is wisdom and like yeah and so that's that's sort of a much larger discussion but um you know the whole kind of like the um what were they called uh manic pixie dream christian yeah kind (laughs) of yeah um (laughs) uh what were what were they called i'm thinking of like you know julian of norwich and like all these uh, you know, female Christian mystics, um, well, well, like she was, there was a term for it, like anchor, anchoress or something like that. Anchoress. Yeah. And so like these were, and she was from in the 1300s, Anchorist? um, a- anchor, like anchor, like where, yeah. a po- where a podcast is hosted. And then S, <laughs> Beautifully um, done, dude. <laughs> but any, so yeah, that was something that Bunyan was definitely interested in. And, you know, the whole like speaking in tongues thing and like, 
more, like you said, more direct communion and, and, and so on and so forth. Oh, you're right. So, yeah, an anchorite uh, is just someone who withdraws from secular society and an anchoress is a, yeah, a woman who chooses to withdraw and live a solitary life of prayer and mortification. Yeah. Like Julian of Norwich. So, sort of like a, a term for a nun, but I think it has more right. kind of like m- more mystical connotations. You uh, live in a mossy cave maybe or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, well, I, I definitely... I think we should come back to the the role of gender in, in these stories. Um, but if you want to hear the and, and also I just want to tease Bunyan's own conversion story in his actual life that he talks about in Grace Abounding, uh, women play a, a, a pivotal role in that story. And if you that's want, true, if you want to hear it, you can subscribe to our Patreon where we're going to talk about it uh, after the jump um, because we've reached our artificially determined limit for the uh, free public episode. Um, Gotta cut y'all off. You've had enough. Yeah. It's time to leave the bar. <laughs> exactly. Closing time. <laughs> Get the fuck out. Unless you want to pay us money. What you owe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for the drinks you've had. Uh, so, all right. Well, um, y'all know what time it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's time to... I was trying to do it like a Gregorian chant or something. (laughs) That was pretty good. You're a wizard, Harry. You're a wizard, Harry. You're a wizard, Harry. Uh, (laughs) So (laughs) this is the, the segment, everyone's favorite segment. You know it. Where we put the characters. It's called, we literally just read another book. Yeah. So. You can't be mad. Let us do what we actually want. Which is talking about Harry Potter, motherfuckers. Mis- yeah. And we're doing it. So we're going to put all the characters. thing to do. Obviously not all the characters, because this book had like a thousand fucking characters. Uh, but the, the big characters. Into- Mr. Greyheart Gryffindor, he's a Gryffindor. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Greyheart's a Gryffindor, true, obviously. He starts true. with a G anyway. No question. Uh, Done, right? Yeah. Mr. Greatheart, yeah, easy, gl- easiest Gryffindor of all time, right? The easiest Gryffindor to even He basically name. is Godric Gryffindor. Yeah, he might as well be. Paul? He, yeah, he basically is Dumbledore. <laughs> no, God... He's actually God, arguably a God, God is Dumbledore, <laughs> God and is Dumbledore. the devil is Voldemort. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, Paul. God. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> um thank you Gabriel. <laughs> okay so mr greatheart easy uh easy gryffindor easy <laughs> what about um christian's two companions faithful and hopeful easy puffs dude yeah i thought they were puffs whoa interesting i'm okay. saying 20 point 20 points to hufflepuff on this one uh, why okay why puff they just seem a little bit more less gryffindor than Christian, they will seem like a little, little bit more, little softer, oh, but not faithful. in a bad way. Faithful is fucking faithful martyred is for his beliefs, martyred, dude. So that actually, I think it's pretty Gryffindor. Oh, that's true. Hopeful is Hufflepuff. Ho- I faithful think hopeful. Is and they also both both start letter H, so hopeful puff. Yeah, faithful actually meets a like a grisly a fucking gruesome end. <laughs> well, I, I, I want to talk about the how graphic Bunyan is too. <laughs> As as sort of an expression of his mental state uh, later, but sure, yeah, but yeah, so uh, yeah, so faithful Gryffindor, hopeful Hufflepuff for me. What do you say, Paul? Oh uh, yeah, that makes sense to me. Sorry, I was listening to Faith by Limp Bizkit just now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that cover, dude. It's so good. It's really good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Limp Bizkit. Go listen to pause and listen if you Limp want. Limp Bizkit underrated, confirmed. Um. <laughs> yeah. So that just leaves, I think, the big two, uh, Christiana and Christian. Um, I think they're both Hufflepuffs to God. <laughs> right? I think you just made, you invented a new religion just now. <laughs> you, in, I could see, like, churches popping up. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just, that's just the classic like youth pastor meme where he puts his hat on backwards and sits I down back on chair sits up back on the chair like if you think about it we're all really hufflepuffs for god <laughs> let's rap for a minute about god huh and he has like a basketball yeah yeah 
the kids are like, that's too many things. I have a skateboard. <laughs> I, I, I actually think, and maybe this is heresy, but I actually think Chris Heresy G- Potter. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think Christiana might be a Ravenclaw. Uh, Which is, why? Because why? she, she uh, is... She wants she's like wants to know the truth. She likes to talk to people and like get to the the bottom of their you know situation with all of the people she brings along in her party. Mm-hmm. And then there's that scene. Um, there's that scene in it might be the the beautiful house or it might be is that that's Gaius's house right? Or is that different? Gaius is the in the, the one where the person's showing them all the different like uh, sort of riddles. Basically. No, no, that one's different. And that's we do, the interpreter. And we yeah. yeah, and we do need to talk about that because that appears in both stories. Yeah. But um, no, this is where I forget who asks her, but someone's like, you know, like basically like you said, Matt, like yo, why don't you rap to your kids a little bit about scripture? And she pops the fuck off. And that's like, Gaius. Yeah. That's Gaius, yeah. And then and then her kids pop the fuck off, and they're like. It's like yeah. Why don't you catechize your ki- catechize catechize Cate- Well, so it's catechism. Ca- catechism. I, I assume catechize. Yeah. Um, you're a high. <laughs> yeah. You're, now we're talking. Now, now that I can get into. You're a high, Harry. But anyway, she pops off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It doesn't don't make, make sense at just, all. But don't just make me like an idiot stream of stringing these things. Yeah. Together. This sorry, is, we'll this keep is, talking intelligently. <laughs> this is becoming a Joycean and novel. Just fucking <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. free associative. Anyway, I, I'm. I think. Uh, <laughs> I think Christiana is a low is a low key uh, uh, Ravenclaw. Loki, my favorite Marvel character. Sorry, we got to stop. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> Christiana reminds me of Cristiano Ronaldo, who is kind of a uh, Gryffindor. <laughs> But kind of a Slytherin. And Cristiano Ronaldo reminds me of Ronald Weasley. <laughs> <laughs> of how handsome he is. Anyway, uh, I'm down for well, I think Christian's probably a puff. Yeah, Christian. Chris, yeah. I yeah, could, strong I could puff. Be, I could be converted to the Christiana Ravenclaw thing, but uh, you know, yeah, I'll you know what I'll agree with you actually. Yeah. What Same, about sure. Christian fighting? The, well, I forget the name of the the demon monster. Apollyon. Uh, Apollyon for you know, ten hours straight. Yo, that was fucking Gryffindor. Pretty brave. Yeah. True. He. C- I mean, he might be a Gryffindor too. But it's only because he's so afraid that he's bad. He's a bad guy. Yeah. True. Strength through God. Yeah. <laughs> is that Puff Puff. is that Gryffindor or Puff? That's the question. I don't yeah. know. Wow. Well, everyone, lots we're of chew on there. We're at Naporia. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, did you guys have a word from this book? I do. I do. Anchoress isn't bad. I'm going to steal it. That's not in the book, but it's a good word. Fuck. My word is sepulcher. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, S-E-P-U-L-C-H-E-R. A small room or, or monument cut in rock or built of stone in which a dead person is laid or buried. Hell yeah. Pretty Spooky. grand word. Fucking metal. Mine was uh, Roth. W R O T H. Um, and I was like, I was kind of like, a, at, at first, I was like, oh, that must be just like a, like one of these old timey spellings of like wrath, and it kind of is because it basically just means angry, right? Um, but I had just never seen that that before. So Roth. I like Slough. I think Slough is fun That's to say. That's a good one. And and Paul, you like this? It means swamp, right? Ooh, a sort of my boggy, favorite thing. or also I love a bog. A situation characterized by lack of progress or activity. Example: the economic slough of their interwar years. How do you spell this? S L O U G H. That's a great one. Yeah. So it might even function well in Scrabble. It would. Um. All right. Well, that leaves us with. The score portion, where we score the book out of five points. Yeah. Dave's not first. Uh, gotcha, Paul. I gave you time that time, dude. You did. Uh, yeah, it's my fault. I'll Big take runway. the brunt of... That was my fault, Paul. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know how to read this book. <laughs> I just... I mean, overall, I just... I had a terrible time reading it. It was just difficult to read, and it, it's mostly because the subject matter just interests me. Like it, and I just have a propensity. You mean of, it doesn't interest you? What did I say? 
it, it does. does. <laughs> oh, it does not. Yeah. There we go. Um, I just don't. Yeah, like the the past books we've read that have like Christian themes. Like I'm thinking of the Burnt Out Case book. Yeah, sure. Graham like, Greene. Yeah. That was probably one of the more heavy religious Christian based books we read. And I just like I just kind of find myself checking out. It's just like not a part of my life. There's no judgment from me at all. It's just like I check the fuck out. And I checked out of this book pretty quickly and um that's just something I do that I can't seem to stop doing. <laughs> uh yeah, it's just like re- the the reading experience was just like please Satan come and shoot me in the back of the head. <laughs> um, You're a man of this world. Mr. Worldly <sighs> Paul. Yeah, Mr. I'm not. Worldly I don't Paul. care. I want to be in my own little world. Read. <laughs> I want to read the books that I want to read. It was a stew book. Um, but, I mean, it's my own personal bias, so I'm just going to be fair and not give it a one, because when I first finished it, I was like, def- I like, fucking, that was a one. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll give it a two, okay? Because nice, nice. I didn't. I did hate it, but it's mostly because I was just disinterested. I don't think it's, it's obviously like a very famous, important book. It's like a historical relic and maybe those things I just don't care about. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> that's, that's why we have such a, we have such a diverse party on the podcast. Yeah. We have different uh, skills and stat lines. Likes and dislikes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, right. So, yeah, I mean, I, I actually agree with Paul in the sense that I find this book very difficult to, to give a number rating to because it's, you know, so much of so much of my appreciation of it came from my kind of secondary readings, which have a lot to do with Bunyan's kind of personal biography and how this book relates to other books that he's written, that he wrote and um, just the, the sociopolitical context of the time. And like, of course, that's true of any book, but uh, of this one specifically, um, but but it also grabbed me in a really fucking way that I that, that was unexpected for me. Um, I was I was like in a really fucking way. <laughs> in, a really fucking in, a, way. in a really yeah, in a really fucking way. Uh, I I kind of was expecting roughly Paul's experience. Like this is gonna be a slog. I'm gonna be kind of just churning through it and and trying to get it done. Um, but I I was I I really connected with Bunyan in a weird way I felt to the point that like I read an entire other book about this book uh for this episode which I've never done before like I you know I do background research and look up this and that and maybe watch a lecture or two but but something about this book really fucking got to me I don't know maybe I'm a Calvinist now but uh JK I'm not um just a little well I (laughs) Okay, we yeah. can talk about that on the Patreon. Yeah, we will, yeah. Um, <laughs> because I know you are for 100% Matt. Um, <laughs> but I'm a Christian, I think. You're, yeah, I know. <laughs> a- 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 <laughs> I know. A- anyway, uh, I'm and, and, and I think when you, when, you put it, when you put all that together with the historical significance, where this falls just in the development of the novel as a genre, as like yeah. doing doing fictional writing as a thing. Um, it's a, it's a 4.227. Dang. That was actually surprising even with the lead up. All right. Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah, I, I sympathize with both parties. Like Paul, I, I'm on a prose level. I, I think I said this even in, earlier in the show, like it was, I wouldn't call it pleasant, right? Like I, I was like not, like I said, my my twenty first century brain and uh, you know just sort of like very biblically influenced old old English, even though it's suppo- it was supposedly at the time like a kind of fun colloquial, like you know down and dirty Vulgate version of you know a, a, a biblical story. Like it's it just felt very tough to get through. Um, but that being said, uh, like Gabe, I I found myself just being sort of interested more in the in the story and context around around the book. And also, there were parts of the book that like did move me and felt weirdly relevant to now. Uh, a lot of like 
spiritual quandaries that I think are applicable, which must account for why this book is world famous and I, emphasis on world, like adopted by uh, uh, religions that are entirely not Puritan and all this kind of stuff. Like people, people from completely different and almost like antithetical backgrounds <laughs> theologically are like, this is pretty good. Uh, including a uh, a revolution in in China called the, I think the Tai Tai Taiping Revolution or Taipei Revolution, uh, in which the like leader of that Christian revolution in China this was his favorite book all this kind of stuff um, and Bunyan yeah just a just a super interesting figure and uh, you know I'm 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 also just interested in like the sort of like puritan legacy especially because you know we're around the new england area and all that so uh yeah i'm with gabe i was gonna give this a four clean four nice clean clean <laughs> like my soul <laughs> 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 yeah cool yeah. uh well all right so um my soul is dirty because i'm in a slough or whatever it is yeah you, you are, are in a slough <laughs> you are yeah, i love it yeah. yeah, you do, you little pig. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little piggy oinky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pull your, pull your little curly tail. Don't clean me <laughs> off. <laughs> Just let me sit in it. Just let me sit <laughs> in it for days. Yeah, you can't clean me. Uh-uh. Oh, so uh, okay. Oof. Let's take a turn. Um, Spicy. Well, uh, clearly there's a lot more to talk about. Uh, Matt just raised a bunch of issues. Paul raised a bunch of issues. And we're going to do that uh, after the jump. As I've said many times, if you want to hear that, patreon.com slash spinecrackers, it'll be there. If you want to pierce the veil and go to the Scion. Yes, exactly. It, it will cost you tithes. As little as two bones, though. Right. So mm-hmm. we will it's see you nothing. there. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you, guys. Thank you.